Welcome to another Fiddleback Friday. I'm Robert with Fiddleback Forge. 15. That is the number of amazing knives that we've got this week. 13 of those are Fiddleback Forge branded knives. Two of those are apprentice knives that we're going to show you, as you can see right here. We've got bone handles. We've got nice color combinations, beautiful bolsters, pinstripes for days. But the one thing you may not notice from this little short video clip of knives is there's a new steel in the house this week. So we're going to talk about the steel and we're going to show you what those knives look like in hand. All right, so like I said, there's a new steel in town for Fiddleback Forge knives this week. It's 8670, as you can see right here. It's gonna carry the same hammer texture that we use on ADC RV2. Well, why is that? We might get confused. Well, we're gonna do away with ADC RV2. We're gonna replace it with 8670. Why? Well, it's more stain resistant. It's got all the same toughness as everything else that ADC RV2 has but it's a little more stain resistant, which means less maintenance on your end. Plus, it just does better in the shop. It's easier to heat treat, it's easier to grind. Uh, it does better in the quench with a lot less warpage, so we got a lot less loss. It's a win-win-win across the board for everyone, and we couldn't be more excited. It's one of the awesome benefits, as you know, with Andy and Joey being two of the partners with Pops Knife Supply, is they get this immense knowledge base of all of their customers with that who are also knife makers. So they get all that knowledge base from that as well as access to all these fantastic materials, including all the handle materials. So it's a win-win for everybody. You guys are the biggest winners of all because you are the recipients of all of that knowledge and all that access to awesome handle materials. So before I show you what these knives look like in hand, I need to remind you all of them go live as they do every single Friday with the new batches, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the website fiddlebackforge.com go into the shop tab look for fiddleback friday or just scroll down the page so you see the banner that says fiddleback friday go to that page and be ready to refresh right at nine o'clock i can tell you the past few weeks every knife almost has sold within the first five minutes of being posted many knives and i mean many of them go in the first minute so don't be late, be there at nine o'clock, already have the page up, already be ready to refresh that sucker and grab the one that you want. So if you're looking for a photo preview, same website, fiddlebackforge.com, go under blog, news and events, and you'll see a few photos and all the specs for every knife in case I miss it in this video. Uh, that's where you can find that information every single week. We send that out early as well as a newsletter. So while you're on the site, make sure you sign up for that. So now that I got all that out of the way, let's show you what these knives look like in hand. Let's go. Okay, so I wanted to get the in-hand started with one of the knives with the new 8670 steel. So this is the Leuku, and I chose the largest one that we did with the 8670 um, so that I can show you better uh, or best the hammer texture that's on here. So this is the same hammer texture that we were using for the 80CRV2, but because the 8670 is likely to replace the 80CRV2, which you probably won't see again, um, we went ahead and used the same hammer texture on that, so it will take over. We just really like the hammer texture, didn't want to get rid of it. Um, so I wanted to be able to show you that. Now also on the 8670, you will see a little bit of the ghost timon. You can't see it much on this model and probably not at all in the video. Um, but just under that grind line right there, you can see a little bit of a ghost timon on the other ones I can point it out. Uh, so that is a characteristic of the 8670 as well. And this does not patina quite as much as the 80 CRV2 did. So. Uh, that is the breakdown of the 8670 uh, that I didn't go over before or a recap of what I told you before. Uh, but this is the Leuku as far as this model goes, 530 seconds on the 8670 with a taper tang, as you can see, black liners, got the blue pinstripes to really make that uh, JG10 pop in the glacial jade color, as we call this. And you'll notice we finished it out with the matching blue G10 pens, which are awesome. So this is the Leoku, like I said, largest model that we finished out in the new 8670 steel, super duper tough steel, really, really beautifully finished knife. Uh, that bad boy is about a five inch blade and roughly nine and a half inches overall. So really great one to start with. And we're gonna put her right there. All right, so next up with the 8670 steel, 
is one of my favorite models, as you guys know, the Hiking Buddy, uh, which is one I carry often. And this is one of the ones that I told you about that we have in the Camel Bone. So this one is Caramel Swirl on the Camel Bone there, as you can tell. Beautifully finished out. It's got the nice Trinity pen out on there as well. Really, really well done, as you can see. Skeletonized full tang. Black liners on the red pinstripes. And this started out as the eighth inch, 8670. Uh, like I said, it is skeletonized full tang, so it's got a nice full, heavy feeling handle with that bone and the skeletonized full tang. Uh, but the balance point is still right there at those second pins. So it still feels light in the hand when you're working it, but it does feel substantial. So that is the Hiking Buddy with the 8670. And as you can see right, there maybe uh, you can see that little ghost to moan right there where that grind line starts really beautiful beautiful knife really well done we'll set it next next to its big brother in the 8670 all right next up on the 8670 steel models is one you haven't seen very much of recently and this is the little lady and the little lady, as you'll remember, is the miniature version of the old school ladyfinger. So it's the EDC version of the old school ladyfinger, which was always a classic and loved fiddleback forge model that's been retired, at least for the time being. So African blackwood on this one with the goldenrod micarta on the bolster. It's got uh, that really cool orange pinstripe that borders the entire pommel. You can see there it's got the taper tang. And this is 8th inch, 8670. Really, really beautiful. Really high grind on that. So if you like them to feel extra thin, you're really going to like that model. Balance point on it, it's right there, right in front of that first set of pins right there on the bolster. So this one is light and nimble and thin. So if you like your EDCs in that style, you're really going to like that. Barely kind of a four finger design. Uh, if you've got larger hands than me and I wear a large, extra large glove, depending on the glove, even in a three finger uh, situation, the way that your pinky tucks behind that pommel is always very, very comfortable, no matter how you're holding it. So really super functional EDC size, the little lady in the 8670. So keeping with the trend of shrinking down very popular Fiddleback Forge knives and making them more appropriate for EDC and everyday carry, uh, this is the Loner. So the Loner is a shrunken down version of the Bush Hermit, which is kind of the culmination of everything that Andy's learned over the last 10 years about making bushcraft knives. And this one's been shrunken down into more of a pocket carry kind of style and size. It's Hiking Buddy-esque in size, uh, about a three and three eighths inch on the blade. Uh, so very close to the hiking buddy on the blade length, about seven and a quarter overall. Uh, so kind of a large uh, pocket size if you carry it in a pocket sheath. Uh, it's a little bit on the larger side, but to me, this size range is the sweet spot uh, for everyday carry. Uh, it's just big enough to get some serious jobs done, but just small enough where you can easily carry it in your pocket all the time. Um, so that has the loner. This beautiful handle material is emerald box elder burl. And you can see that it is finished out super nice. Got that nice natural liner and the lime pinstripe really, really set, that, set it off and bring the colors out. There is nothing better than box elder burl in my opinion. If you like a burl wood on your knives, it is absolutely gorgeous. You can see Andy really killed that tapered tang as well. Really beautifully balanced and really beautifully done. Uh, like I said, 8670 steel finishes out really beautifully. You can see that little ghost to moan there as well super nice hammer texture this knife is so comfortable it's definitely one of my favorites i haven't personally picked up one yet um, i really like this one kind of wish i didn't have to show it to you guys and i could take it home but i'll have to grab uh, maybe one down the road instead because i definitely plan on picking one of these up i'm a big fan of the bush hermit and obviously being a smaller version uh, that bad boy is awesome so you can see the balance point right there uh, right in front of the second set of pins really nicely balanced in hand feels super lightweight uh, even though it is a little bit substantial, still feels nice and lightweight because of that tapered tang. But again, maybe lightweight isn't your thing. That's why we make a little bit of everything for everybody. So this is the Patch, another very popular EDC size knife that we've got. Uh, this one we're calling Blue Vanilla Swirl on that bone. So that is bone handle. You can see the blue really pops out on this. Really reminds me if you took like a, like a lemonade slushy 
and you threw in some blue raspberry and you lightly mixed it up. It just looks like a killer mixed drink you'd want to have on a hot summer day. Really beautiful. Uh, skeletonized full tang on that so it didn't take out a ton of weight. So the handle does feel substantial. Uh, it's nice and rounded off, nice and thick on the handle as well. So if you like a fuller feeling handle on a smaller knife, uh, that patch is going to be magic for you. Sorry about the lint right there. Whenever I try to wipe these down, they actually create their own lint on the rags. So that's what I get sometimes. But you can see that 8670, really beautifully finished out. Nice high grind on that. I can tell you it is a good and thin grind. So if you like thin grind on your everyday carry knives, you're going to like that as well. Got the black liners, the yellow pinstripes. That thing just looks as delicious as it feels in your hand. I mean, it's really cool. A lot of character in that handle as well, which I'm a huge, huge fan of. So that's really nice. That's the patch. But it's time to kick it back old school. Well, sort of, on the steel anyway. So we're gonna kick it back old school and bring you back to A2. Uh, tool steel that you are used to seeing out of the Fiddleback Forge shop, obviously. And what better way to do it than this amazing Drop Point Renegade. So the Drop Point Renegade uh, is based on the Renegade model. Uh, but don't worry, it's not a shrunken down model like a couple of the other ones I pointed out. It's a full size model. Uh, the difference is the Drop Point blade instead of a more upswept uh, Skinner type blade. So uh, a little, little bit more for everyday carry. And the biggest feature of the Drop Point Renegade is as always, that handle shape. So it's got this hump right here in the middle that your middle finger sits on. It gives you a lot of pivot and control. It's just super comfortable the way that this particular knife melts in hand. Uh, really awesome. And as you can tell by the handle material, what better way to kick off the A2 series than that? Absolutely beautiful. Uh, black canvas micarta on the bolsters. Really knocked it out of the part with the red pinstripes and the black in the center there. Absolutely astonishing how well they finished this thing out. So, like I said, A2 steel starts life as an eighth inch, goes down with that super nice taper, lines up really nice with those liners, and that handle material absolutely BA beautiful. So, call it red, black, Burlatex. And I would call it something more like a crimson fire flame. We didn't really rename it. We probably should. We'll, we'll rename it for next time. But uh, red, black, Burlatex, absolutely beautiful stuff. Drop Point Renegade is definitely one of my favorite handles. It just feels great. Just a really, really nice kind of a semi-open handle design. Beautiful. This one is going to go super duper quickly just to let you know ahead of time uh, we've had a lot of talk about that on the forums so everyone's going to be looking to grab that one so be in a hurry all right next up is this little bad boy right here so this is the baby boot another miniaturized version this one is a miniaturized bush boot super high grind on that a2 steel I uh, got emerald ash, which is absolutely beautiful. I don't know if you can pick up on the chatoyance because of the way our light source works on the videos. Uh, you can pick up on a little bit of it there. Absolutely gorgeous handle material. Got the double mint jade on the bolsters. Got the black liners. Those lime pinstripes wrapping the entire bolster. Really, really sets this thing off. Absolutely gorgeous. The wood's gorgeous. The jade is gorgeous. That G10 pen right there and that lime color to really match those pinstripes. Really killer knife, really nice little small design, about a three finger design on that. Your pinky tucks in really nice behind the pommel there. Uh, really comfortable, really, really functional, and super duper sexy. So A2 steel, 330 seconds, skeletonized full tang. The blade's about two and a half inches long, uh, about five and three quarters inch overall. So super nice and a little pocket sheath. Really, really great little EDC carry. And we're gonna put her right there. You're barely gonna be able to see her, but she's there. All right, so maybe you live in a moist environment. You still want a killer EDC knife. You want something that's beautiful, sexy, uh, checks all the boxes right here. So this is the Warthog model. Got that beautiful Masur birch on the pommel there. That really nice orange 
pin right there to match those orange pinstripes. Natural bolsters, natural little liner right there in the middle, natural liners here. Got CPM 154 and 330 seconds with a taper tang. If I can get it to focus, there we go. Super sexy knife. So blade size and handle shape uh, and handle size very close to the hiking buddy, but obviously with that beautiful upswept precision tip there, a little clipped point, uh, definitely a different shape and feel than the hiking buddy. Uh, but if you're familiar with the hiking buddy design, which is there, um, this handle is going to feel very familiar and very at home. It's very close, not exactly, it's not identical to the Hiking Buddy, uh, but it just, it, in your hand, it feels familiar. So, really, really nice knife. I really dig this design, and I love, love that birch handle. Absolutely amazing. That thing is so sexy. All right, we're going to put her out here, move on to the next one. All right, so maybe you love that Warthog, but maybe maybe it's just a little too fancy for you with the pinstripes and the bolster. You want to keep it simple. You want to keep it sexy. Maybe you want something a little more on the natural side. That's where this beauty comes in right here. So this, again, is another Warthog model, uh, but this one, it's got that vanilla swirl bone. Absolutely gorgeous. This stuff is so beautiful. Uh, so it feels a little bit weightier than the other as well. Also, not having the tapered tang. Uh, gives you a little bit more of a substantial feel, but it's not super heavy. So I don't want to give you the impression that the knife is real heavy because overall it's really not. Uh, it's got a balance point right there at that second set of pins, so it keeps it super light in hand. Uh, when you're pivoting them in, in that area, the weight just kind of disappears on you. Uh, 330 seconds A2, skeletonized full tang on that. Black liners with their classy white pinstripes really brings out the color of the bone even more. Absolutely gorgeous spalting on that as well, as you can see. Again, sorry about the lint. I try to get all of it. It just never quite comes off because it creates lint as I go. So that's the Warthog Vanilla Swirl. Absolutely beautiful. We're going to set it next to its brother over here or sister if you prefer. Right there. All right, next up is another showstopper as far as the handle configuration goes. This is a Recluse. Uh, so it's a little bit larger, more uh, outdoor functional size, four inch blade, eight and a half inches overall. It's got ivory G10 right here in the middle, as you can see, and kind of double bolstered on the bolster and the pommel here with uh, natural micarta. Absolutely beautiful. Natural pins in there on the G10 really set it off. Natural liners as well. Uh, don't let your eyes fool you on this. This is not white on the pinstripes. These are actually Tiffany blue. So it gives it a really nice, subtle shift in color. Really nicely done. I'm a real big fan of that combination. Would not have thought that it would pull off quite as well as it does, but I really, really dig it. Eighth inch A2, taper tang, as you can see there. Beautifully done. Balance point on that right about where that bolster starts a little bit behind it actually right there really nice spalting on that as well nice balance the recluse is a really great model uh, you know as soon as you look at it if it's for you or not it is the smaller version of the leuku that you see there i can't hold both of those in one hand up at one time or i would show you the size difference uh, but it guaranteed i will drop it if i try it so you'll have to take my word for it and uh beautiful and that spalting as i mentioned that's the Recluse, super awesome on the handle combo, as you can tell. Just beautiful set, beautiful set. All right, we're going to take you guys back to elementary school right here. It's peanut butter jelly time. Anybody else hungry for some lunch? All right, we got the PB&J burlap right there. Kind of reminiscent of Nutter Butters, if you really look at that texture on that burlap. Really cool. Man, kind of got that grape jelly on the peanut butter look to it. Absolutely beautiful stuff. Got the Trinity pin out, as you can see there. Black liners, white pinstripes. 330 seconds, A2 steel. Beautiful grind on that. Beautiful spalting on the blade. Really turned out super nice. Like I said, 330 seconds, A2. Skeletonized, full tang. Uh, Handyman is a fantastic everyday carry model and also a small kind of woodcraft knife good carving knife as well uh, no finger guard on that but the way that it's indexed you always know where this knife is 
it just excels at doing any kind of woodworking. Three and three eighths on the blade, seven and five eighths inch overall, super comfortable in hand no matter how you hold it, kind of a semi-open design on the handle. Just, it's called handyman for a reason. It, it's a do-it-all, do-it-all knife that you will absolutely love. It'll be definitely one of your favorite ones to carry and favorite ones to use, especially when it's peanut butter jelly time. Man, dig that knife. I like that handle material a lot. All right, so this handle combo is quickly becoming a Fiddleback Forge classic. And for good reason. It works super duper well. Now, goldenrod micarta on the bolster. This is that burnt orange micarta, one of my favorite handle materials back here on the pommel. But as you can see, added in that beautiful white pinstripe that completely wraps the entire pommel. As you can see there on that taper tang as well. Absolutely gorgeous combo. Trinity pin out with the natural pins, natural liners. Really awesome. So about the model. This is the Gunstock Bushcrafter. Named so because the handle is shaped similar to the buttstock on a rifle. Very comfortable in hand. Uh, kind of melts into your palm, especially in this grip is where it's the strongest. So if you're doing a lot of uh, forced movements where you're, where you're doing some heavy downward carving in this area of the knife where you're really trying to get that leverage behind it. That's when it's really, really going to shine. But it's very comfortable in hand and a variety of grips. Absolutely cool. Good working knife, working size as well. It's got a four and three eighths inch on the blade, nine and a quarter inch overall, eighth inch A2, taper tang, beautifully done. That is the Gunstock Bushcrafter. Beautiful. Love that handle combo. Those colors go super well together too. So if you're looking for the budget friendly Fiddleback Forge handmade knife in a usable utilitarian size and shape, look no further than the Shaman. It's got the cross cut paper micarta on that with plenty of my fingerprints. Sorry about that. We do have a little bit of wax and oil on all the handles. So does get on my hands as the video goes on. Try to wipe it down there where you can actually see the grain instead of the streaks. There we go. No liners, no pinstripes is one of the features of the Shaman. Uh, it really keeps the simplicity down on the design and the finish out, which keeps the price down so we can pass that on to you. Uh, but very, very functional utilitarian design on that. So if you want a heavy, hardworking, custom handmade knife that you don't have to worry about beating up, you're not gonna feel guilty about it, Look no further than that. However, that handle material is gorgeous. Really simple, understated, that cross-cut paper micarta and that natural paper color. Absolutely beautiful. I love it. Fantastic little knife. If you're looking in, into getting entry level into the Fiddleback Forge handmade knife game, that's the one to do it with right there. So that is the Shaman 8th inch A2 little bit of a taper tang, which is an upgrade that you don't normally see on the Shaman. So that'll bring it up a little bit, but uh, well worth it, especially for that balance and that feel. That knife is great. Put her right back there. All right, last but definitely not least, we're gonna go over the apprentice knives. So let's go with Joey's first. Uh, JB Knife Works, this is the GPK model. Uh, Stands for general purpose knife, if you can't figure that out on your own. Beautiful black canvas on that. He did this really cool fire dog micarta insert on that. Lined the pommel and the bolster both with that white pinstripe. Really beautifully done. Joey kills it. He always knocks these out of the park. Uh, and he's also always experimenting with really great steel. So this one he did in 52100, which is a tried and true, obviously. Uh, traditional knife steel, really beautifully done, eighth inch on that. Did throw a bit of a taper on there as well for you. Really beautiful. Convex grind, approaching flat. It's pretty close to a flat grind, but it does have a little bit of convex to it. Really beautifully done. Joey does a great job. This knife model is a full four finger grip. Really great, great knife. And of course, based on the name, you know what it's for. Everything. General purpose, baby. General purpose knife right there from Mr. Joey Berry, JB Knife Works. All right, so last but definitely not least for the apprentices, Miss Amy with Warlander Enterprises has absolutely killed it again. 
She has some of the sexiest knife designs out there for sure. As you can see here, this is the Mesquite model. We've had a couple of these models before. Really cool. She's got eighth inch A2 on that. You can tell she does not use the Fiddleback Forge spalting. This is a nice hammer texture that she's done. Uh, this A2 has also been cryo treated as well for a little added touch on the heat treat. The handle East Indian Rosewood is beautiful. East Indian Rosewood, definitely one of my favorite. A very hard wood, uh, really super well done. She's got the tuxedo liners with the black and the white there. Three and three quarter inch on the blade. Satin hammer finish on it. About an eight and three eighths inch overall. And the steel, mm, mm, mm. That A2 finished out super nice with that hammer texture. Really great knife. And of course, with Amy's knives, you also get a fantastic sheath because she is a fantastic leather maker as well and always puts really nice pants on her knife to save you one extra step after purchasing. So that is Amy's knife with Warlander Enterprising prizes. Go back. And with always with Amy's knives, you get a beautiful sheath to go with it because she is a fantastic leather maker as much as she is a fantastic knife maker. So uh, one less step for you to do, get a nice pair of pants there for your knife. And that's the offering from Amy this week with Warlander Enterprises to go along with those fantastic Fiddleback Forge knives. Remember guys, life's too short to carry an ugly knife. Get a Fiddleback or a Warlander with that nice JB Knife Works. See you guys next week.